The National Broadcasting Company invites you by transcription to join The Chase. In the animal world, there is the hunter and the hunted, hound and fox, hawk and sparrow, cat and mouse. We in the topmost species have also joined the hunt. But who is to judge precisely which of us are hounds or foxes as we enter the chase? Hey, lucky folks, hey, lucky, step right up and buy your tickets by the strip. Hey, lucky, hey, lucky, step right up and buy your tickets by the strip. One for young and old. I did it again, Kathy. Put both those last two candles out with just two shots. Too bad we don't have prizes at this gallery, mister. You'd clean me out. I told you my name was Bob. Now, how many shots have I got left for my quarter? Uh, three, I think. I'll light up those candles again and watch them get knocked out. You're a regular one-man fire department. Don't you want to try for those tin ducks or the clay pipes there? Light up the candles, Kathy. I'm a specialist. How'd you find out my name? Oh, it wasn't too hard. I went over to Madame Loranda's there at the fortune-telling booth and made a bet with her. About me? I bet her half a dollar your name was Melinda. Ma and Myra Loranda told you my name was Kathy? I had to to collect the half dollar. Uh, but I told you for free that my name was Bob. Aren't you ever going to use it? Uh, Excuse me, bud. Oh. Kathy, uh, can you get the stand closed up and come over to Adam's office for a minute? Closed up? What for, Chipper? Well, there's been a little trouble. The boss wants you to confirm a statement he's making. Uh, wait a minute, Kathy. You won't have to go to all the trouble of closing up. I can mine a concession for you if this won't take too long. This kid a friend of yours, Kathy? Well, yes, I, I know him, but I, okay, I don't Okay, we'll I... get your bills out of the register and let him take over. The worst he can do is fire off a few free shots. It'd look better if the place stays open anyway. Oh, Bob, you're sure you don't mind? Run along, Kathy. It'll be a pleasure to hold the fort for you. One thing, kid. Anybody ask you, don't start saying there's been trouble. It's all over. We don't want to start stampeding any of the Saturday night crowd. You got that straight? No, I'm not even asking what the trouble is, am I? If it'll help Kathy out, that's all I have to know. Thanks, Bob. I'll try to be back as fast as I can. Let's go, Kathy. Skipper, this must be real trouble. I can tell. Oh, I wouldn't call it real trouble, Kathy. At least not for anybody but old Uncle Billy. Uncle Billy? That poor old man isn't off on a bender again. Old Billy's done all the drinking he's ever going to do. What we happened? fished him out of the water in the Tunnel of Love about half an hour ago. Out of the... Drowned in the dark there in two feet of water. The doc just gave up trying to bring him around, and there's an ambulance waiting on the side alley to take him to the morgue. Oh, Skipper. You said there was just a little trouble. We're all sorry about it, but, well, as Adam says, we've still got a Saturday night crowd here. Billy had to get blind drunk and go stumbling into the tunnel. Is that any reason for spoiling Saturday night for, for all the hundreds of customers here? Is it the customers' feelings Adam is concerned about or the cash registers that wouldn't ring if this news got around? Now, take it easy, kid. Take it easy. There's a cop over in the office. All he wants is to have Myra, Loranda, you and a couple of more of us back up what Adam told him about Billy always hitting the bottle and having a weak heart. Here, we can go in the side door. Duck that mob out in front. Is this the man you knew as William Connery, Miss Owens? Yes. We all knew him as Uncle Billy, officer. Okay, the name was Connery. We got that pinned down. Now, you didn't know him before he came here to do odd jobs around the park for Mr. Sadlick here? No. You don't know of any relatives he might have? He never talked about any, at least not to me. But you did know him pretty well. Your boss says you were kind of a favor to the old man. Yes, I, I always liked him. Yeah, he got drunk every Saturday night regular, didn't he? Real drunk. Billy never hurt anybody but himself. And if he did take a few drinks once in a while, uh, I don't... Just answer Officer Keogh's questions, Kathy. Well, Adam, it's not fair with poor Billy lying there. The officer has his report to make, Kathy, and he's only trying to confirm what we all know happened. Yeah, thanks, Mr. Sadlick. The old guy could really tie one on, couldn't he, Miss Owen? Get so he didn't know whether he was coming or going. Yes, I've seen Billy with too much, officer, but 
I saw him about two hours ago when I went over to get something to eat, and I'm not sure he was drinking at all tonight. What do you mean? Well, he was worried about something he'd found. He started to ask me about it and then said I probably wouldn't know either. It was just some scrap celluloid he had in a blue tobacco can. A blue tobacco can. Like this one? Yes, I'm almost sure that's the can he had. And he didn't seem as if he'd been drinking. Uh, Mr. Sadlick here tells me the can was empty when they found it on him after fishing him out of the water. You sure the old guy wasn't just kidding you, Miss Owens? Well, of course, I don't really know whether it has anything to do with uh, the... Thanks very much, Kathy. You've confirmed what Officer Keogh wanted to know. Uh, if there are any minor loose ends, Officer, your people can get to them tomorrow, can't they? Well, I suppose I have got enough for this preliminary report, and... Seeing as we got the doctor's findings to back it up, I You're uh, that... all squared away. The body can be moved out quietly to the morgue with no further trouble for anybody. All right, Kathy, you can get back to the shooting gallery now, and I'll let you know about the funeral plans when we get them worked out. For tell your future, folks. Seventh daughter of a seventh daughter, I lift the veil that hides the days and nights ahead. Will you be rich? Will you be lucky in love? Will you be both? For 50 cents, you can know. Not 50 dollars, not even five. Myra. 50 cents, folks, for a preview of your own future. Myra, can I see you for a second? Oh, oh hello, Kathy. Honey, by the looks of this crowd, I've got all the time in the world. Sit down, make like a customer. Maybe that'll get him started. No, I've got to get back to my stand, but... Well, there's something I want to ask you about Uncle Billy. Oh, I... I didn't know you knew yet, Kathy. I was afraid you'd be broken up about Myra, it. Myra, you remember last week after that second big mystery fire downtown, you were telling us something about scrap celluloid and paraffin wick. Can you tell me again what it was you said about celluloid? But, uh, what, what's this got to do with old Bill Connolly? That's what I'm trying to find out. Billy found some scrap celluloid somewhere earlier tonight. And Kathy, said, you're not trying to say you think old Uncle Billy was a firebug? Of all the people in the world who wouldn't go in for arson... Myra, you said the firebug who's been setting those big downtown fires probably used celluloid and paraffin wick. Celluloid because it burns fast and doesn't leave ash or odor, and paraffin wick before that to get... Kathy, a... child, have you lost your mind? Poor old Bill was drowned, not burned to death. Thanks, Myra. I'll explain later. I've got to see Adam Sadlick again fast. <laughs> Adam, you've got to call the police in again and clear the park. Take it easy, Kathy. What's this all about? I'm not sure now that Uncle Billy wasn't murdered. And if he was, I think I know why. Hey, hey, wait a minute. Where'd you get this wild idea? You know the pipe tobacco Billy always used? Well, it doesn't come in a blue can. All right. Maybe it doesn't. There was scrap celluloid in that blue can when Billy showed it to me, and that could mean that Billy found signs of that firebug getting ready to operate here. The same firebug who set those two big fires downtown last week. And Adam, if it is the firebug, and if he's out there somewhere in that crowd waiting for a chance to touch the place up... Uh, well, uh, Kathy, perhaps... Oh, Adam, you will? Uh, t tomorrow or Monday at the coroner's inquest, you can call it homicide, attempted arson, anything you like. And if the cops want to have another quiet look around, I'll cooperate all the way. But I know they won't find anything, so I'm not letting you go off half-cocked tonight. You can't really stop me, Adam. I could phone the police right now and... You haven't a scrap of evidence. Ah, uh, get back to your gallery, Kathy. Forget all this nonsense about a firebug being loose. But there is a firebug loose, loose and operating all through this area. You've seen about it in the papers yourself. And I saw where a girl had herself triplet last night at the hospital over town. That mean I have to open an emergency maternity clinic here next to the roller coaster? Oh. Now, now, the thing to remember, Kathy, the is that... The thing I'll remember, Adam, is that I don't think Uncle Billy was drinking at all tonight. And he was trying to find out about that celluloid. Hi, Kathy. That was a pretty long ten minutes, but I took in four fifty for you. Uh, four seventy-five, as a matter of fact. Of course, I owe you a quarter for another clip I shot off myself. How's that for your new partner, huh? Thanks, Bob. It's wonderful of you to stand by for me. Well, it's a pleasure. You'll find the money there in the register, and if you want, I'll start replacing those clay pipes the last couple knocked off. Thanks, sir. I think I'll be closing up the gallery now. 
Closing up? It isn't past 10.30 yet. I know, but there's something I have to do. Hey, here. Let me help you with those shutters. What is it you have to do all of a sudden, Kathy? I have to find a man who may be somewhere in the park. A man? I suppose I shouldn't ask about him, This but... isn't anybody I know, Bob, or anybody I want to know. But if he's here, I have to find him. Look, Kathy, cut me down if I'm out of line, but... I was hoping you'd let me take you out for a while after you finished here tonight. Oh, that's sweet of you, but not tonight. Because of this man you've got to find. There, yeah, that closes the place up. Yes, Bob. Because of this man I've got to find. Or at least try to find. I don't get it, Kathy. Didn't you say it was someone you don't know and don't want to know? That's right. I think he's a pyromaniac. A pyro... Well, isn't that what they call a firebug? A man who likes to start fires? Well... Sure, and but... what's more, I think he may be a murderer. Oh, wait a minute, Kathy. We don't know each other very well yet, but if you think I'd let you or any girl go off alone in search of the kind of trouble you're talking about... All I... right, then, Bob. You can come along with me if you want. You really mean that? Well, I'd probably need some help anyhow if I ever caught up with this man. And since Adam and Tipper Trash won't believe me... Kathy, what's this all about? Well, Bob, a harmless old man was drowned here tonight. And I think he was knocked out first or held under the water till it happened because I think he'd found a man putting celluloid or kerosene where it could threaten every building here in the park. And the thing I mean to find out is... All right, honey, if you have to know, I'll tell you. But I think you and this nice young man ought to be off dancing somewhere instead of plaguing me about arson wicks. That's what I've been trying to tell Kathy, Madame Loranda, but she won't listen. Just describe the wicks again for me, Myra. I want to be sure we'll know what they look like. Well, you could call it a very fancy way of playing with matches, Kathy. You see, the idea of the thing is to give the firebug some clear getaway time before the fire actually breaks out. Yeah. If you took any kind of a lamp wick or rolled up piece of cloth about, uh, well, as long as this pencil, say, and soaked it in tallow or paraffin. Or in bacon fat if you don't have any paraffin. Well, yes, I, I suppose nearly any kind of grease would do. The thing to do, Kathy, once you have some wicks, is to time one or two samples for their burning time. Then you put a collar of matches in one end, sewing a tape them on just barely enough to hold, so they'll pop out every which way when the wick burns up to the matches. A lot of matches fastened on. Mm-hmm, dozens of them. And then, if you... Set this wick near a pile of scrap celluloid or waste paper, somewhere under some dry wooden shelves or crates where the fire can get a good start. Thanks, Ma. I'm pretty sure we'll know what to look for now. Well, I think if the guy exists, and if he did look in here earlier tonight, and if he had any kind of sense, he'd be miles away by now. Bob, if our man thought the way normal people do, he wouldn't be what he is. Are you coming with me to have a look around the park or not? I'll tag along till you give up, Kathy, and then I still think we ought to be reconsidering that late date I asked about. Kathy? One fifty cents worth of fortune telling for free? Oh, go ahead, Myra. Make fun of me some more. No. No, honey, I'm not making fun of you now. I say, if you think you've got anything, go out and get some law in on it, whatever Adam says. If you don't, you could... Well, you could be taking on more than you bargained for. Thanks, Myra, but I'm still going to have my look around. We're going to have our look, Kathy. I told you, I've signed up for the duration, except just remember, there's supposed to be a mighty fine moon coming up around midnight. by the strip, a thrill for young and old and every age in between. You can't take it with you, and who wants to on a Saturday night at Adam's Paradise? Hey, look at folks, hey, look at Bob, Bob, look at that man just over beyond the merry-go-round. Uh, where? There, he's standing half hidden by that poster board. Oh, oh, sure, I see him now. What's special about him? But don't you see what he's doing? That's the hose outlet leading down from one of the three emergency water tanks in the park. Well, Volta, he's trying to turn that thing on, isn't he? Of course he is, and it's marked hands off as plainly as you could ask. Well, why would he be... He could be trying to drain off all the extra water pressure to hurt the firefighting layer. Come on. Wait a minute, Kathy. Shouldn't we wait and No, we've got to stop him, Bob. Come on. <sighs> hey, what do you think you're trying to do, mister? 
Don't you know you're not supposed to fool around with those water tanks? <laughs> well, what do you know? What do you know? Are you folks thirsty, too? Is that what you think that thing is, a drinking fountain? I don't know what it is, except it ought to have some water in it. If they don't have any fountains around... They the have. There's one just over by the roller skating rink there. Oh, well, thank you, little lady. Thank you. Didn't see how I was going to get this open without a wrench anyhow. You say it's over there by the skating rink? Yes, you can see it from here by those benches. Oh, so you can, so you can. Watch me go over and drink it dry. Well, that lets him out, doesn't it, Kathy? He's heading straight for the drinking wait, fountain. Wait, wait a minute, Brad. Let's watch him for a minute. He could have been making that up about Oh, me. not that character, Kathy. Look at him. He's got a grip on the fountain now, and he's drinking away like a camel back from a 10-day desert run. He's really thirsty. Yes, I admit it looks that I'll way. tell you what, Kathy. We've been patrolling around now for nearly an hour. Let's have one ride on the roller coaster here before we start again, huh? Oh, but we won't be able to watch people in the crowd from up there. Well, you'll be able to see the whole park and it'll give our feet a rest, okay? Just one ride? <sighs> well, I suppose one ride won't lose us too much time. Got a girl. Let's go. <laughs> About I'm it. sure you didn't realize it, Bob, but you did almost have us in danger back there. At least you almost had me in danger. That man behind us hadn't spoken up when he did. For I... a couple of minutes there, I guess I was acting like a ten-year-old. Bob. What is it, Kathy? Bob, I just noticed something. You see the back of the Tunnel of Love building over there? Tunnel of Love? The place where Uncle Billy's body was found. From the ground, I wouldn't have remembered how closely it backs up to the old house of fun, but... From up here on this platform, you can see that there's only a narrow alley between them. Oh, I can see a lot of old wooden buildings oh, all jammed together. Oh, I should have realized it before that House of Fun building's been closed for two seasons. And, of course, it would be target number one for anybody who wanted to start a bad fire here. Well, we'll be back on that again. Back on it, Bob, and I think this time we may be near an answer. Come on, we're having a look inside there. <laughs> could go up before they got it under control. Well, it's a fire trap, all right. I'll grant you that. For but... an arsonist, it's even better than that, Bob. Almost anywhere else on the ground, a fire might be noticed before it got very far. But here it could be roaring up before anybody even knew it was started. Well, Kathy, I... I didn't want to say this before because I was hoping you'd give up on this obsession after a obsession? while. Obsession? Yes, obsession. I was hoping you'd give up on it and we could go out tonight. If you're going to wait the whole evening poking around in places like what, this... What are you trying to say, Bob? That, that, that you think as the others do? That this is a crazy notion I have about Uncle Billy discovering the firebug at work here? You keep saying firebug, Kathy. You think a man with courage and brains enough to burn up a whole warehouse or apartment building and get away with it is someone to brush off with a ridiculous name like that? Bob, you wouldn't be defending a man crazy enough to do I, a... I... 
I wasn't trying to defend him. I just think you ought to remember there might be two sides to everything. Bob, you almost frightened me. You seem bent on, on taking this maniac's part. And a moment ago, you were denying that there could be any such man. Kathy, I... I... I guess this is my night for arguing around in circles. All I really want is to get out of this place pretty soon and get started on our plain, old-fashioned Saturday night date. Just the two of us, with no complications at all. But, Bob, I've almost enough now to prod Adam into action. This old house of fun broken into at the door nearest the back of the Tunnel of Love. And, and Bob, look there. What? There, there where my flashlight's pointing. Isn't that a pile of scrap celluloid next to that sack of old empty crates? Let's have a look. Come on. Oh, Bob, it is. A and look at all the old Excelsior crammed into these crates. This is where the fire was supposed to be started. Oh, now, wait a minute, Kathy. This looks pretty careless here, I'll admit, but how do we know that Excelsior wasn't just some packing material for whatever came in the crate? This celluloid was brought in here. There's never been anything like it around the park. This is where the fire was to start, Bob. All arranged and ready for the candle or the arson wick. You know, Kathy, I guess this is the end of the trail. You've been the only one here at the park smart enough to suspect what was planned for tonight, and now you've nearly proved it all the way. No, well, it won't be the end of the trail until we catch the firebox. That just means we can call the police in and get started. And we'll just have to forget his Saturday night business when we show him this. Kathy, what makes you think your boss will even know about this? Well, we'll go and tell him now, of course. Will we? Bob, what's the matter with you? Of course You I... don't think it would be a pity to spoil what could be one of the best fires in years around here? All these old wooden buildings that would go sky high in flames if just one little match were dropped here in the celluloid? <sighs> Bob, you've been the one all along. Where'd you think you were going, Kathy? Let go my wrist. Wouldn't that be pretty foolish of me, Kathy, now that you know as much as you do? You're the firebug. And you're the one who killed old Billy when he found you getting set up here. That old fool came looking for trouble and he got it. I didn't mind about him, but... But I'm really going to be sorry about you, Kathy. I wasn't fooling before when I said that I'd go for you. Go ahead, scream your head off. With a couple of hundred women out screaming on the roller coaster on every ride in the park, do you think anyone's going to hear you? You couldn't be crazy enough to think you could get away with two murders. If I thought I could trust you, Kathy, I'd much rather take you along with me when I clear out of here. Oh, no, don't try to twist away again. I'd like to take you along. But I've learned there's only one person in the world I can depend on, and that's myself. You wanted to push me out of the roller coaster. You knew even then that you'd have to try to get rid of me. You happen to be the only one around here with bad ideas about that old watchman. It was my luck to find that out when all I'd actually looked you up for was to try for a date. Chris, what's that you're taking out of your pocket? A handy little device you heard badly described by our friend Madame Miranda. An arson wick. A much better one, I promise you, than any the old woman ever heard about. This one will burn for exactly nine minutes before it sets off the celluloid. Time enough for me to take care of you and get all the way out of the park before this building starts going up. You really are insane, aren't you? Call it different for most people, Kathy. As different as a smart wolf from a flock of tame, brainless sheep. Oh. Oh. Wait a minute now. While I set this down here by the celluloid where I can get at it with one oh. hand. Oh. Oh. Excitement happens to be my pleasure, Kathy. You and all the rest of the sheep are the ones who slave away and build the buildings. But I'm the lone wolf who can burn them down with one scratch of a match. Like this. Now I just get my nine-minute work started. customers milling around out there. I'm worried about traffic. Okay, we'll put a report to the office announcement on the amplifier. I'll throw Tipper and all the spare hands we've got on it. Thanks, Adam, but I want you to come out on this with me yourself. If you'd only listen to Kathy to start Okay, this... okay, I'll trail along with you, Myra. Where'd you figure to start looking? Well, I 
I think there are just three places in the park where Kathy might not be able to keep everything under control. Down by the water where the boardwalk's being repaired? That's one. Or down the basement of the power plant. Or anywhere in the old house of fun. Uh, let's try the power plant first. If any trouble ever started there, it could be plenty bad. <laughs> Three of the nine minutes gone, Kathy. Made your mind up yet? You haven't given me much of a choice, Bob. That's all I can afford to give you. In six minutes, those matches will be popping off into the celluloid, and I've got to be out of here and a couple of miles away by then. Now, which way do you want it? Just knocked out and left here to burn? Or... or really dead before I go, if you don't like the idea of fire. I could make it fast and pretty painless. You keep from twisting while I use this knife. I suppose there's no use of much No, time. no, no. I can't take you with me, even if you pretended you wanted to play along. I know you'd turn on me the first chance you got. Fire or your knife? Which, which would you take, Bob? If... Yeah, that isn't even a choice. Of course, I'd take fire. If it came down to that, I wouldn't have to be knocked out either. Fire's the cleanest, purest thing in the world. You don't have time to put out that burning wick, Bob. And if you gave yourself up and took treatment, maybe you'd still have a chance. I give to the make... treatments. I don't take them. And that's all the time you get for stalling, Kathy. Now, is it the knife or do I tap you on the head? Would you light me one final cigarette, Bob? You said you hardly ever smoked. I hardly ever get murdered. And don't all condemned people have a right to one last cigarette? You won't have time to smoke it all the way. Just, just, just to get it started. Then I'll leave the next move up to you. You won't make a choice Put, between... put the cigarette in my mouth and get your match lighted. After that, it's up to you. Okay. There's your cigarette. And here's your match. Oh. Oh, Kathy! You knocked that lighted match right, right into the... Right into the cellar And there goes your blaze ahead of schedule. You crossed me! You crossed me! Not finding those flames so clean and pure anymore, are you, Bob? Don't waste time trying to stamp it out. It's too late. It's not too late to knock you right in the middle of that yes, fire. Yes, it is too I... late, Bob. Look behind you. See who's coming through the window. Adam! Adam, this way, this way, Adam! Okay, Kathy. Okay, we got him covered. All right, you. Drop the knife and come out of there. Nobody takes me alive, mister. Nobody. Look out, Kathy. Look out. He's not going after her. He's running right back into the Bob! Fire. Bob, come back. Nobody takes me, Kathy. Nobody. <laughs> get away? No. No, Kathy. Bob finally caught up with enough fire to last him for keeps. Chase was created for the National Broadcasting Company by Lawrence Cleese. Tonight's script was written by Charles O'Neill. In tonight's cast were Patrick Campbell, Bill Lifton, Sidney Smith, Adelaide Klein, Jack Lloyd, and Walter Black. Next week, a disembodied voice dictates the story of love and murder on The Chase. The Chase was directed and transcribed by Dan Fetter. This is Arthur Gary speaking. Three chimes mean good times on NBC. This Friday evening, Bob and Ray offer you a half hour of sparkling comedy, then Mario Lanza, lovely Giselle McKenzie, and Ray Sinatra in the orchestra spotlight your favorite songs on the Mario Lanza show. Later, the singing violins on...